Welcome to a video about mathematical partitions. Not partitions like in your hard drive, but partitions pertaining to numbers specifically. The definition of mathematical partitions goes as follows. An integer partition is a way of writing a given positive integer x as the sum of another positive integer, or other positive integers. In other words, it is the number of ways that a positive integer can be written using positive integers, such that the sum adds up to the original number x. For example, 2 can be displayed as 2, so that would be one partition of 2. It can also be written as 1 plus 1, so we would therefore say that 2 has two partitions. For the number like 3, we could represent 3 as 3, of course, also 2 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 plus 1, giving 3, 3 partitions. Now we will move on to a demonstration with Legos. As you can see here, we have five Legos. That first partition of five is five. Now we have four plus one Legos, which is also a partition of five. This is also a partition of five, as in three plus one plus one. This is also a partition of 5, 3 plus 2. 2 plus 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. And finally, 5 ones to make the seventh partition for the number 5. To go over what we just did in Lego form, we will now demonstrate the partitions of 5. As you can see, 5 is a valid representation for a partition of 5, along with 4 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 3 plus 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2 plus 1, 2 plus 3 ones, and then 5 ones, giving 5 a total number of 7 partitions. Now let's take a look at Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem states that the number of ways to partition an integer as a sum of unique integers is equal to the number of ways to partition that same integer as a sum of odd integers. For example, let's take a look at the partitions of 5. Of the partitions of 5, how many of them are a sum of unique integers? Well, we have three of them. We have 5, 4 plus 1, and 3 plus 2. Now, how many of the partitions are a sum of just odd integers? Well, we also have three of them. We have 5, we have 3 plus 1 plus 1, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now, Euler stated that we could represent the number of ways to partition an integer as a sum of unique integers with the following polynomial, 1 plus x times 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x cubed, and so forth. But how come? Well, let's take a look at this example, x plus 1 times x plus 1. If we FOIL that, we will get 1x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 1. And if we simplify that, we will get 1x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, if you look carefully, you, you can see that the coefficients be before each x represent how many ways we can get that type of x. For example, x squared, we can only get it once by multiplying the, f the two x's, but we can get x uh, twice by multiplying the first x and the second number one, or multiplying the first number one and the second x. And one, we can get it by multiplying the two ones. Now, let's take a look at this example, x plus one times x plus one times x plus one. We know we will get an x cubed here, so how many ways can we get x cubed here? Well, only once by multiplying all the three x's. But how many times can we get x squared here? Well, we can get x squared by multiplying the first two x's and the, and the last number one, or multiplying the last two x's and the first number one. Or if we multiply the first x, the middle one, and the last x, therefore giving us three ways of getting x squared. Well, we can use this same idea when we expand the polynomial representation. How many ways can we get number one from here? Well, we can get it only one way by multiplying all the number ones. How many ways can we get x from here? Well, we can also get it once by multiplying that x from the first binomial and then the rest of the ones. How many ways can we get x squared? Well, we can get it only once by multiplying the x squared from the second binomial and then the rest of the ones. But how many times can we get x cubed here? Well, we can get it um, by multiplying the first x and the x squared and then the rest of the ones or the x cubed itself and the rest of the ones, so twice. 2x cubed. But how many times can we, let's say, can we get x to the 6? Well, we can get x to the 6 four times. So how does this relate to integer partitions, you may ask? Well, the exponent represents integer n, and the coefficient represents the number of ways to partition that integer n as a sum of unique integers. And you can see that if you partition 6, you will see that there are four partitions that are a sum of unique integers. 
Similarly, Euler proposed that we can use a second polynomial, x plus as 1, plus x plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, x plus cube, x plus cube, plus cube, and so on and so forth, to prove that the sum of partitions of odd integers with repeats is actually equal to the sum of partitions of unique integers. If we take a closer look at this polynomial, and we consider taking the product of this infinite polynomial, we realize that we can actually get those partitions out of those of this polynomial, such that there's one way to get one, one way to get x, one way to get x squared, two ways to get x to the cube, two ways to get x to the fourth, and two ways to get x, three ways to get x to the five. Basically, where the exponent is the number that we're evaluating and the coefficient is the actual number of partitions that you can get from that number. So how do we go about proving that polynomial 1 is actually equal to polynomial 2? As Euler's theorem clearly stated, to prove this interesting fact, we can recall a geometric series which can be represented as s equals a over 1 minus r where a is the first term and r is a common ratio. Using our second polynomial, we can actually write this as a geometric series where 1, as you can see, would be our first term and our common ratio would be s, then s cubed, then s to the fifth, then the next one would be s to the seventh, x to the ninth, and so on and so forth. Using this polynomial in its geometric form, we can then multiply it by what we consider a difference of squares expression, which we can actually expand out to be 1 minus x squared 1 plus x squared and so on and so forth and when we actually cancel our polynomial and this um, expression we would end up getting back the exact same polynomial 1 that we had originally before this polynomial 2 which proves that the two are indeed equal. Having said that, now can you partition integer 9 it's just using odd integers and then just try it using unique integers as well. Leave your comments in the comment section below and happy partitioning.